I've made a pistol and shotgun in Besiege, and while these were fully functional, they were also a little on the slower side. Today I want to try making a working, semi-mechanically accurate, fully automatic machine gun. So loading up into the sandbox here, the first thing I want to do is start building up a bit of a wood platform and work on the bullet. Now you can see here, I'm using some wood panels to start building up one side of it. And I figured I'd start with the bullet here to get the sizing right for everything else, and you can see once I got the basic shape in place, I deleted some wood, and after that, I started curving the panel. Now once I did that, that. You see, I also copied it over a bunch, and now I have a full circle. With that done, I gave it a test here, and it seemed to be holding together pretty well. So next, I wanted to put in a bomb, and this would work like my primer. After pinning that up in place, I gave it a test here, and it fell out a little bit, so I had to push it a bit further in, and after that, I also capped off both sides. Now the front of this, I just completely capped off, but the back, you see here, I'm leaving a bit of a gap. This is so I can get the striker pin in there, so it can hit that primer, and actually cause the bullet to go off. And you can see now, it seems to work out pretty well, so with that looking good, I copy this over again, and this is so I can add in the actual propellant section. This is going to consist of two bullets here, and with that built up, you can see here, as you blow up the primer, it blows up all of the other bullets, so with that looking good, I added in a balance to the front, and this is going to work like my bullet. Once I got two of those in here, you can see, as I blow up the primer, it seems to shoot the bullet pretty far here, so this is looking pretty good. I did notice it was shooting up a little bit higher than I was expecting, but honestly, that was a good thing, if anything, so I just kind of wanted to keep that. And I also shrunk down the front of this bullet a bit more and started to clean it up. Now to hold in the bullet, I also added in a panel to the front here and I made it out of glass. This will let the bullet go right through and that seemed to work out pretty well. Now after that, I also made this little dome on the front that was totally decorative just to look good and with that done, I also put in some grabbers here just temporarily to hold this in place. Now this is going to let me start working on the striker mechanism and of course that's what I'm building up now. So I put in a couple wood logs, put in a hinge and I put in this pin. This is going to let me fling this forward and hit the bomb and already that seemed to blow it up. The thing I was really happy to see though is as I hit the bullet, you'll notice that the striker flies back and that motion is going to be perfect for reloading the mechanism so I can hit another bullet. So next up, I wanted some sort of spring on this to be able to push this forward once I had it loaded up. So I put in a suspension piece here and a couple of hinges and you can see now this can let me pull this back a bit but it's also going to return to center and I was hoping I could use this to push it into the bullet. Now it was a little slow though so what I needed to do here was add in more suspension pieces to get a lot more spring spring force. This helped out, but I also noticed the mechanism was binding up a lot, and with one extra slider, it seemed to be working. It was bending a lot, which I didn't like to see, and I also realized it wasn't really going forward that fast at all. In fact, it seems like the suspension pieces are adding in a lot of extra dampening that I don't want. You'll notice now, I added in some slider blocks instead, and the mechanism is back to being totally limp. On these slider blocks, though, I added in some springs, and these are going to act just like the suspension, but these spring pieces don't have any dampening. This means that as I pull this back, it should go forward with all of its force, and already it seemed to have a much better effect. It also occurred to me though, I don't need this really complicated mechanism anymore, and I could just put the spring straight on this locked block. This simplifies things a ton, and you can see here, as I pull this back, it hits the bullet and flies back into place. That's gonna work out perfectly, and I added in a grabber on the bottom here to hold onto that pin. And you can see here, it gets held in place, and that should work out. I didn't love this though, and a while wanted a more mechanical mechanism, so notice I got rid of the grabber, and instead I'm trying to build up my own device using ballast to hold onto the striker, but it didn't really seem to bite at all. Now I added on some extra arms here to give it a bit more bite, and this seemed to help a little bit. I noticed that the striker was hesitating a bit, but it still just slipped right past it, and it didn't seem to work. Moving out those arms a bit more did seem to get the trick done though, and now as I pull back the striker, you see it locks in place and doesn't let the striker get all the way forward. And while this was working, there was a a lot of friction in this design, and also it was very inconsistent in how we grabbed the striker. So what I wanted to do now is actually delete this back piece and go for a slightly different design. This time, I'm also going to be using a hinge, but now I want to put springs on it. This means that as the striker goes back, it should be allowed to go down easily, but it should have a lot more trouble going up. This seemed to work fine when I pulled back the striker directly, but anytime I tried to explode the bullet, it seemed to never latch on properly. I could tell this design was very close to working though, so I deleted deleted that back piece, and instead of putting the hinges on that, I instead wanted to put the hinges on the striker. And at first here, it was working, but I had nothing to stop the arms from flipping back up, so I added in some wood pieces here to stop the hinges from rotating down. This means that now the striker goes right back down into place, but if I try to bring it back up, it gets stuck on those logs, and just by moving those logs out of the way, I should be able to refire the bullet. Now, I also added on some springs here, and these are going to pull down those arms a lot faster, and you can see as I shoot here, it hits the bullet 
bullet goes back and actually gets locked in place. So that was looking great, and all I did next was got rid of the ballast and replaced them with wood poles. This has a lot less friction, and once I did this, it was working a lot more consistently. I also went ahead here, and I deleted the wood logs, and I replaced those with swords on hinges. And you can see here, they seem to move pretty freely. Now, they were moving a bit further than I wanted, so what I did next is adding in some wood pieces to act as stops. After that, I also added in some springs here to pull them back into center a lot more, and with that, you can see here, it still gets locked in place, and now I just need a way to unlock this mechanism. So I added on some wood poles to the end of those hinges, and to push them out, I added on some pistons. You'll see after I got those on both sides here, I'm able to push it out, and that moves the swords quite freely. And giving it a test now, it still makes this mechanism get locked in place, but once I want to fire it, you see I push out those swords, and it seems to go forward. Now next up here, you see I deleted the wooden pole, and I replaced it with this metal spear. I was hoping this was going to hit the bomb more consistently, and you can see now, as I open up those swords, it hits the bullet, and it gets relocked in place. So with the striker mechanism looking really good, I wanted a way to load in more bullets. Now starting out here, you see I added in a half pipe, and the bullet just rests in that. This is going to make it a lot easier to load in more bullets, and once I had that, I also need a way to eject the bullet reliably. To do that, you see here, I added in some wood to the bottom, and as the bombs explode, they push those logs down, and as they fling right back up, they hit into the bullet and should eject it away. So with all that ready to go, next up, I wanted to start working on the magazine. So I copied a bullet over to the side here, and you can see after that, I started to build up a wooden platform. This was going to form as the base, and once I got roughly the shape in place, I got the bullet to sit right on that. Got it on a ceiling as well, and after that, I tried to encase the entire thing in. This should stop bolts from falling out, and next up, I made most of the panels out of glass. This should let us see what's going on on the inside, and after adding in a small piece to the back that I can use some winches to pull in, this should be everything I need. Now you can see here, as I pull in the winches, it should allow me to move the bullets forward and load them up. So with everything ready to go here, I copied in a second bullet and wanted to see what it would do. It seemed to link itself to the first one though, so to fix that, I had to rotate it 45 degrees. Now with that sorted, I copied in six more bullets, and you can see now I'm able to pull them straight out of here. This seemed to work pretty well, and I wanted to put it on the gun next. This was where I started to run into issues though, because you'll notice that as the loaded bullet explodes, it caused all of the bullets in the magazine to explode as well. My thinking was that I could just move the magazine up a little bit to stop it from being within the bomb's range, but that's when I found another issue. As I tried loading bullets from the magazine, the fall is too far, and they always explode as they hit the half pipe. This means that they're both too close and too far, so I'm going to need a different system. I was thinking here what I could do is make some sort of rotating arm system to grab onto the bullets and bring them down towards the trigger. So after putting those arms in place here and adding on some grabbers, added in some more logs, and after adding in some more grabbers here, I got this big wheel that should work pretty well. So I tried loading on some bullets here, and it did seem to work. The first bullet loaded on fine, and after that, I got the positioning right so that they're falling right in place. And on the bottom here, after firing off the first bullet, I noticed everything caught on fire, but fortunately, it didn't cause any bombs to explode. So after quickly dragging the casing out of the way, I tried loading in another bullet here, but that's when I ran into a problem. It seemed to be colliding with some pin blocks I have, so I had to move this a little bit out of the way and give this another test. This seemed to work out fine, so with everything at least seemingly okay, I wanted to try rotating up the magazine and having gravity feed them into the grabbers. Now, just letting them sit on the grabbers does kind of cause everything to explode, but I move this out to the side, and after that, I added in a wooden block. This should stop the bullets from falling too far, and after pinning that in place, I added in a slot here to let the bullets leave the magazine. And with this, you can see here, I was able to grab a few of them, and this seemed to be working pretty well. One other thing I noticed, though, is that as the bullets got too far down, they seemed to explode each other, which I didn't really like. Now, to get more spacing between the bullets, you see I deleted four four of those arms, and with that, now I have a much simpler design. For some reason, though, I couldn't get this to spin around on its own anymore, and it seemed to be really weak. So to fix that, I've tried using some bigger wheels here to get more torque. And once I got this put in place here, I tried giving it a test, but it seemed to just cause all the logs to instantly explode. So instead of using bigger wheels, I just tried to use more wheels, and after intentionally setting everything on fire here, I gave it a test, and it seemed to be working just like before. Unfortunately, though, I noticed that the magazine would explode 
explode occasionally. I wanted to come back to this issue in a little bit, and first you see here I'm adding in a sensor. This is gonna automatically tell once the bullet has been dropped, so it's able to fire it. And you see here this dry fire seems to work out fine, so with that looking good. Next up, I added on four angle meters, and these are in place to automatically drop off the bullets once they get down in place. And I can see now for the first time, I had a fully automated shot go off, and it seemed to be perfect. So after that, I wanted to see how many shots I could have go off in succession, and the answer was two. After that, it seemed like the magazine exploded again, and I was going to need to find a solution to that. The first thing I was thinking was changing out some wood blocks for glass. This should have less friction, and therefore explode a lot less often. Unfortunately though, it still seemed like the fall was a bit too great, and just the action of the bullets falling was causing them to explode. So next, I moved down the block that they were sitting on, and I put some suspension on that. That should dampen the fall a lot here, and at first it was compressing a bit too much, but after increasing the suspension strength, it seemed to help out a lot here, and you can see it falls a lot more gracefully. Now occasionally this still would explode, but it was significantly less likely now, and with this the system was mostly holding together. In this test I was even able to get three shots off. It only stopped because the spent casing went straight into the arms, and that caused one of the bullets to shake too much, and then explode. So to fix that, you see here I'm adding in some ballast to act like a shield to prevent that from happening, and I'm replacing the wood with a bunch of braces. You should let the casings go straight through them, and at first it was working, but notice the explosions were causing the ballast to shake a little more than I wanted. So to stop that, I increased their mass to 10 times, and with this, the wheel wasn't shaking anymore, and now with the mechanism seemingly working, I wanted to start working on the aesthetics. Now, I started working on the back here with some logs, and I just wanted to get a basic shape built up that I could eventually replaced with some wood panels. After that, now I'm working on something that was a lot more difficult, and that's the drum. I was going to need to make some sort of circular design for this, and to make that here, you see I started by making a big arm. After that, I copied it to all these sides, and I deleted all of the center pieces. With that, I was able to keep copying and rotating it 5 degrees to get this circle. And after finishing that up, I copied it over again, and I deleted a small section of it so I'd have a space to drop out the bullets. And to finish it off here, you can see I started adding in some panels, and these are going to completely cover the outside. Now, fortunately, the skeleton that I built before should give me a very good guide to go off of, and after finishing that up here, you can see I got a pretty good design. Now, I pushed this out to the side, I deleted those wood blocks, and after that, I started working on the front. And you can see I made this pretty simply here, just by adding in a bunch of wood panels, and it seemed to hold together pretty well. Now, next, I copied this over to the drum, and after that, I finished paneling up the back. And after getting everything ready to go there, I turned it all into glass so it'd be a little easier to see what's going on. And with the drum built, Next up, I wanted to work on the barrel. For the first time in one of these builds, the barrel is completely just for aesthetic reasons, and I actually don't have to worry about functionality at all. To build it up here, though, you see I built up a tube, and after that, I also put a smaller one at the end. This gave roughly the look I was going for, and with that done, it was time to make the tripod. This was super simple as well, and I wanted to try making the main leg out of a single piece of wood. Ideally, I would try to conserve as many panels as possible, because this will get kind of laggy, and I also added on some feet at the end just to make it look a bit better. And after that, I wanted to work on the sights. For this, I just put one at the front, so it's not really that realistic, but this thing has enough spray that it's not really that useful anyway. And moving on to the back here, I just wanted to get a rough shape going and also add in the handle. You'll see here, I added in some supports for it, and after that, I added in some panels to actually function as the front part of it. Once I got something roughly the size that I wanted, I fully encapsulated it, and after that, I started working on the stock. You can see there how I got the basic profile, and and then just finished up making it a box. And with that done, I also finished up making up the trigger here. It's pretty similar to my other gun builds. And with all of this, it was time to start giving it some tests. Now, I first wanted to try shooting at this village and seeing how it would do. Starting out, you'll notice a bomb goes off, and that is totally normal. That's intentionally there to push back the hammer and cock it back into place. But once everything was ready to go, I wanted to turn on the drum and see how it would do. And I got a bunch of good shots off here before eventually something went wrong. This was sort of error prone, and a lot of the time I'd have bullets not go off right, or something would catch on fire and go off early, but I was able to get a few good shots off here, and you can see in this later test, I was even able to shoot this balloon. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this design. In terms of the amount of bullets that you could feed 
into a single hammer. This is approaching the limit before you just start having the bombs catch the other bullets on fire, which kind of defeats the purpose of making this semi-mechanically accurate. In fact, I actually tried to design like that before in my previous Gatlin gun video, and that went quite a bit faster. But if you want to see any more content like this, make sure to subscribe. If you have any other ideas for future builds, make sure to leave those down below. And otherwise, until next time.